Hello everyone and welcome. I've done several review videos on different types of security cameras to help you keep your property safe. I'll put up a link in the corner to my security camera review playlist so you can pick which security camera is best for you. But I'm always looking for the best deals on the web, so today we'll be looking at what I think is the cheapest security camera on Amazon. The other day I came across this wireless security camera from Anron. It has many great features that I think a security camera needs to have, but it also has a super low price. I'll explain all the pros and cons of this camera during the video, so let's get into this puppy. But before we do that, if you enjoy watching honest tool and product reviews plus helpful DIY projects, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I produce a new product review video or DIY video. Alright, so let's see what we have here. Here's a shot of the box for you so you can see what I'm talking about. And it's the Anran security camera. This is a 1080p HD outdoor security camera available on Amazon. Link in description below. And let's see what we have here. Well, first of all, you get the owner's manual, which you're going to have to read through to set this up. So I'll talk about that a bit more in detail later on. And let me get this puppy out of here. Okay, so when you unbox this bad boy, this is what you get. You get the camera itself, you get the mounting hardware, and this is also part of the mounting hardware. I'll explain all that in a moment. And you get the power source to power it up. Because this is not a solar-powered camera. This is not a battery-operated camera. It does need power to make the camera run. It is wireless as far as the signal transmitting to your router. But the power source does need, need to be physically supplied. Now, this camera retails for $39.99 on Amazon. But it is actually a bit cheaper than that when you stop and think about it. Because one thing that is also included, which is hidden inside the camera, is a free SD card. And the SD card is inside this little slot right here. You pop this up and right there is a free SD card included with the camera already installed. So that brings down your initial cost of the camera right there by 20 or 30 bucks, depending on how much you have to actually pay to get an SD card. I haven't come across any SD cards if you buy just one for less than 20 bucks. If you buy multiples, I'm sure you can get it a lot cheaper than that. But one single card generally runs around 20 bucks. So that brings down your cost of the camera itself because the more free things you get in a package, the less expensive it becomes. The less you get with the product, the more expensive it becomes because you have to go buy those things separately. Now the dimensions on this camera is seven and a quarter inches in length three and a quarter inches in width and two inches in height, not counting the antennas. The camera itself is only two inches in height, so it's very compact. As far as the weight goes, it only weighs 0.5 pounds, half a pound. So very, very lightweight. It is an ABS body. This is IP66 waterproof, so you could use it outdoors under any kind of weather conditions whatsoever. And it is rated, the operating temperature for this is anywhere from 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So rain, heat, sleet, snow, whatever, any season, you can put it outside, no trouble whatsoever. Now the range on this camera is up to 65 feet. It is motion activated and it does have customizable alerts that you can set up through the app. And I'll walk you through that in a little bit. And it also does have email alerts, so you can get it through the app or through your email, whatever is most convenient for you. You also have remote access to it, and it is encrypted, so it is secure. No one else can see what's going on with your camera and the surveillance around your property. It does have a 2 megapixel HD lens for crisp daytime vision, and it does have IR LEDs, infrared, for clear nighttime vision. It does also have two-way audio, so it has a speaker and microphone built into it. The speaker is down here, and the microphone is on the front. So that way you can communicate to anybody that this camera is pointed towards, whether you have it pointed toward your front door, uh, parking area, whatever the case may be, you can talk to anyone else that is out there. So you can use this pretty much anywhere. You could probably mount it indoors if you wanted to as well. So indoors, outdoors, totally up to you. Very compact, lightweight, easy to mount. Now, as far as the mounting goes, like I said, it includes hardware if you want to physically mount it with screws and stuff like that and mount it to a wall. If you live in an area of property that you're renting or something and you cannot damage the walls, it does include two sticker pads right here, you know, adhesive tape 
that you can mount on the back of it. It does have a smooth surface on the back, so you can mount the stickers or adhesive tape, whatever you want to call it, and that way you can adhere it to the wall without causing any damage to the area that you're mounting it on. And when you need to remove it, obviously it's easy. You just wipe off the residue from the glue and you're good to go. The wall is as good as new. If you're living in a rental property, you definitely don't want to damage it and have problems with the landlord. So this makes it very easy for you. And it has a groove in the middle. So that way you can route the cable through the groove and still mount it properly without any problems there. So that's quite easy right there. And obviously this pivots in all sorts of different directions. You can mount it whatever is convenient for you. So we'll get into all that in a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about the mounting of this puppy and then we'll take it outside, hook it up and see how it looks in daytime and nighttime. All right then, as far as the mounting is concerned, first decide where you wanna mount it and decide if you wanna mount it using screws or if you wanna use the adhesive uh, padding that comes with it. I may try this later on and see actually how well it holds up. But for right now, let's talk about installing it with some screws and so forth. Now, if you're installing it on the wood surface like this one here, Pick where you're going to be installing it and mark the holes with a pencil marker or something like that. And then pre-drill it so it makes it easier for you to install. And if you're going to be mounting it on masonry, cement, anything like that, it does have these little plugs that you're going to need to insert into the hole to get the screw to grip properly. So that is included in the package. You don't need to go out and find it somewhere else. Anyway, so mark the holes, pre-drill them and then get yourself a little screwdriver, either manual or electric screwdriver, and get the camera, and since it's all one unit, it's very convenient to simply bend it down like this and mount it. Makes it very, very convenient, because that way it makes it easier for you to get the screws in there. Get the screw on there, point it to where you want, and then line up the other screws. Let's see, I put that one a little too tight. Attach the other screws and then all you do is basically point the camera up and point it to where you want it to go. And then back here, if you want, all you do is twist the little thing back here to tighten it and you're good to go. Your camera's already mounted. Okay guys, I got the camera set up outside and I'm going to show you some footage in a moment. But first of all, let me tell you my experience with getting the camera set up and running. Now pay attention, this is going to save you a lot of grief right here. Let me walk you through the setup of the camera. Now, I won't show you and walk you through everything because it would take too long, but I will tell you some steps that I learned to save yourself a lot of aggravation along the way. First, let me say that the camera has several different ways to set it up. You can set it up hardwired or LAN mode, or you can select wireless. You can set it up on the app on your phone, or you can set it up for viewing on your PC. The instruction manual has the QR code to download the app from the App Store, and it has a website to download the free software for using it on your PC. So let me tell you some steps to save yourself a lot of grief. First, I'll say that I set this up on my phone, and it's not the easiest camera that I have used to set up with an app. It may be easier on the PC, I don't know, since I didn't follow that method. I will say that the instruction manual is good, but not good enough. Now let me tell you what I learned and how to save yourself some trouble. Follow the procedures in the manual. That is the basics that you need to follow. That's the bones on what everything else will be built on. But keep in mind these helpful hints that I'm going to give you right now to get yourself set up. It's easier if you go with the hardwired or LAN mode, but the wireless mode is what I follow because I think a lot of people are probably going to want to follow that instead. Number one, first of all, power up the camera. Then on your phone, go to settings and locate the IP of the camera as a network. The camera is transmitting a signal. Add that to your phone. Go into the camera settings and add your network password to the camera. Get the camera set up on your phone first so it can communicate with the network first of all. Second, download the app on your phone. Then select your network and add your network password to the app. Get your app on the network as well. Now go to the app and add the camera. You can either scan the code on the belly of the camera or you can add the ID code manually. I won't show you that since each camera probably has its own individual ID and QR code. At this point, you should not be able to get the camera, the network, and the app all to talk to each other. 
Following the instructions in the manual, you can now go to the camera and see what is happening. So you basically need to set up the camera first by itself, set up the app by itself, get them all to talk to the network first of all, and then get them to talk to each other. Unlike other apps that I have used before, where the app simply talks to the camera and pulls down all the information directly, this one makes you have to go and do all the legwork yourself. So you will have to set up the camera and the app separately and then have them talk to each other. Like I said, maybe the LAN method is easier or setting it up on your PC may be easier, but the Wi-Fi method, this is what I chose, this is the way to do it. And one thing also, this camera is a standalone camera. I did not see any information in the manual for cloud service. So everything seems to be recorded on the SD card. But the instructions do have a lot of detailed information in here. It does have pictures and everything. It is color. And like I said, it'll show you for setting it up on your PC, setting it up on your phone, all that stuff. Just keep in mind the information I just gave you right now, and you should be able to understand it a lot more than what I did when I started doing it. All right, so let's look at some footage. And there you are, guys. There's a shot of the camera mounted outside, and I did use the adhesive pads to mount it, so no screws are being used to mount this right now. So that's what it looks like. Let's take a look at some footage, daytime and nighttime. Okay, guys, here you are looking at the camera set up, looking at my backyard, and it's daytime right now, so you can see a nice, clear, sharp image. We'll see later on at night how it looks in night vision. But one thing to point out about this camera is right now we're shooting in HD mode. You can also select SD mode if you want to conserve space on your SD card. So basically, this has different controls that will pop up. If you click on the screen, different controls will pop up, and... On the right side of the camera, you can see controls for panning and zooming. This camera does not have that feature. There is another model camera that has the pan and zoom control. This one does zoom in and out. And one thing I'll say about this camera is that it does do a very smooth zooming in and out. As you can see right there, it smooths it out very clearly. So that's a very nice feature. Not herky-jerky like some other cameras like to do. So let's zoom this back out. And there we are. We are at uh, full screen right there. So I'll come back at nighttime and see what it looks like. Okay, guys, here you have some footage of my backyard at night. This is with the IR setting, infrared. And you can see there's no lighting around, but it's still clear enough, sharp enough that you can see what's going on. It's about 8 o'clock at night, 8.30, about there. So you can see roughly how it looks in the evening when all the lights are out. There you go. Okay guys, some final thoughts on the Enron 1080p HD security camera. Well, it's not a perfect camera. It has some pros and cons. On the negative side, it is not fully wireless. You need to set it up with a power source. For some people, this may not matter, so it depends on your needs. Another negative is that the application for the phone is rather clunky and slightly difficult to get set up. But the setup is something you only need to do one time. So while it may be a little harder than others, it's not a real deal breaker. Some people may choose to set it up hardwired or on the PC, so that may be easier. Another negative is that it doesn't have any cloud service that I could find. But again, for many people, that probably won't matter at all. On the positive side, it is very compact, easy to mount, and very inexpensive. It also has the ability to monitor activity on your PC, which many of these cameras do not have. So it's totally up to you if the negatives are deal breakers or not. I think this is a decent camera for the money with a few minor inconveniences. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye for now.